I've loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. It is a beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. There are those who reason well, but they are greatly outnumbered by those who reason badly. I've loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Philosophy is written in that great book which ever lies before our eyes, I mean the universe, but we cannot understand it if we do not first learn the language and grasp the symbols, in which it is written. They seem to forget that the increase of known truth stimulates the investigation, establishment and growth of the arts, not their diminution or destruction. And, believe me, if I were again beginning my studies, I should follow the advice of Plato and start with mathematics. The increase of known truth stimulates the investigation, establishment, and growth of the arts. Who indeed will set bounds to human ingenuity? Who will assert that everything in the universe capable of being perceived is already discovered and known? I think that in the discussion of natural problems we ought to begin not with the scriptures, but with experiments and demonstrations. To our natural and human reason, I say that these terms large, small, immense, minute, etc. are not absolute but relative. The same thing in comparison with various others may be called at one time immense and at another imperceptible. In the future, there will be opened a gateway and a road to a large and excellent science into which minds more piercing than mine shall penetrate to recesses still deeper. To me, a great ineptitude exists on the part of those who would have it that God made the universe more in proportion to the small capacity of their reason than to his immense, his infinite, power. The greatness and the glory of God shine forth marvelously in all his works, and is to be read above all in the open book of the heavens. To apply oneself to great inventions, starting from the smallest beginnings, is no task for ordinary minds, to divine that wonderful arts lie hid behind trivial and childish things is a conception for superhuman talents. I have never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. You cannot teach a man anything, you can only help him find it within himself. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. All truths are easy to understand once they are discovered, the point is to discover them. Passion is the genesis of genius. It is a beautiful and delightful sight to behold the body of the moon. Measure what can be measured and make measurable what cannot be measured. Mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. The sun, with all those planets revolving around it and dependent on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in the universe to do. It is surely harmful to souls to make it a heresy to believe what is proved. By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. With regard to matters requiring thought, the less people know and understand about them, the more positively they attempt to argue concerning them. See now the power of truth, the same experiment which at first glance seemed to show one thing, when more carefully examined assures us of the contrary. 
names and attributes must be accommodated to the essence of things, and not the essence to the names, since things come first and names afterwards. In the sciences, the authority of thousands of opinions is not worth as much as one tiny spark of reason in an individual man. The Bible shows the way to go to heaven, not the way the heavens go. We cannot teach people anything, we can only help them discover it within themselves.